Hey everybody, welcome back to another World of Warcraft Dragonflight beta video. I have already done videos for all the specializations, looking at them from the perspective of trying to make a talent build that's good for solo play. What I want to do now is I want to go back and look at the tanking and healing classes from the perspective of actually trying to put together some sort of a build to tank or heal, like in, in a group. So we're gonna kick things off here with the Protection Warrior. Now note, this is pretty much just gonna be a theory crafting video. Uh, we're just gonna be looking at the talents and trying to put something together. Obviously the best builds and stuff are gonna take testing and things like that, but uh, I just kinda wanna see where my natural inclination goes as far as picking talents and things of that nature. So uh, we're gonna dive in here. I'm gonna assume that you've got some familiarity with the Protection Warrior and that you've also got some familiarity with the talent trees in dragon flight we're not going to go in depth into every single thing we're just going to look at the talent tree with a new lens a new perspective on it so uh we're going to go ahead and uh, jump in here so let's get our action bars all up should we have them all all right cool so we are specced as protection and uh for talents we start out with our defensive stance here and if we go in, we'll take a look at the stuff we have already. So we got our battle shout and our charge, which is good. We do have defensive stance. So this does say TBD slash work in progress, but it's a defensive combat stance that reduces all damage you take by 20% and all damage you deal by 10% and last until canceled. Now, I don't think this is necessarily the stance you want to be in all the time when you're tanking. I think it depends on how difficult the content is for you, right? It's a subtle balance, I think, when tanking between like pushing as much DPS as you can, but also having enough sustain and survivability that uh, you're not causing problems for yourself or the rest of your team. So, you know, if you're in harder content, yeah, we throw on defensive stance. But if not, you know, it's nice to have another stance you can kind of switch to uh, if you want to um, increase the damage that you're doing as opposed to decreasing it. Got our Execute, we've got Hamstring for some CC, we got our Heroic Throw, uh, so we're going to throw that and that's going to generate a lot of threat. It's a nice way to pull an extra enemy or to dump extra threat onto another enemy or to pull a group, although generally I prefer something like a Charge over a Heroic Throw normally, uh, just because that's going to uh, give us some Rage as well. Got our Interrupts. So we got shield block, shield slam, we got slam, which we'll throw over there. We've got our taunt, our victory rush, and we've got whirlwind for some AOE. <clears throat> and then protection tab, we've got devastate, and we've got all of our passives over here. So we have deep wounds, we've got our mastery, which is critical block. Uh, so that's going to increase our chance to block and critically block. And we'll also increase our attack power. We have our repost, so we're gonna gain parry equal to 100% crit from our gear. Uh, and then we have Vanguard. So all damage taken reduced, stamina increased, armor is increased by a percentage of your strength. So let's get into the talent build and start taking a look. Now, we're not gonna run through these like we did before, you know, going over every single little thing, uh, but we are gonna kind of refresh ourselves uh, here and just take a look. So as far as actives go, uh, we've got only one stance, only Berserker stance now, or sorry, battle stance now. So this is also work in progress. So this is going to increase our critical strike chance and reduce the effects of movement impairing uh, effects on us. So that's that's good. I think it's good to pick this up. There's lots of good things down this side of the tree anyway that we're probably going to want to get. Um, so we'll see we'll see what we kind of get into here. Now looking down here on the bottom, we've got Avatar. Uh, Avatar, I do I do like that. It's it's nice to have. Uh, we've got Shockwave, which. I actually really like Shockwave for tanking. Uh, it's a great CC control ability. We got Spear of Bastion and we have Thunderous Roar. So we have a few different options here, but I'm I, I kind of lean towards Avatar potentially if we got the the Thunderclap potential in there, uh, or maybe Shockwave. I think I definitely want to take Shockwave. I'm kind of looking at this as like a 
normal heroic dungeon build um, where you're not trying to do anything too crazy. You're just trying to have a solid tanking build. And I feel like Shockwave gets a lot of use out of that. So uh, let's see what we got. So we have Rallying Cry, uh, which still isn't an ability that I love, but you know, whatever. It's there. Um, so we have Restore 6 health every one second when you have not taken damage. You're going to be taking damage all the time. Uh, and then we have Rallying Cries. Duration and health granted are increased. So I think I probably would just skip these um, for this kind of build if I could and put those points elsewhere. We do have Intervene. So this lets you run towards an ally, intercepting melee and ranged attacks against them. It's another ability that uh, I don't find myself using often in five-man content. Um, as the fights and things get more complicated and you have more opportunities to kind of like be the hero of the moment, um, then intervene, I think becomes more useful, but just in kind of like a standard tanking build, like I find the use cases for this to be infrequent. So my instinct right now is just to come over and get war machine and get more rage. Um, just generate more rage. So that's going to equal more shield blocks, uh, which is going to be nice. So then we also have impending victory. I still really like taking impending victory, even when I'm tanking, just because I find the mechanic of it to be so nice. And also it gives you a way to help manage your own health and healing um, so that the healer, a little bit of pressure is taken off of them. So I really do still enjoy um, impending victory. Now, we also have Berserker Rage here to remove Fear, Sap, and Incapacitate. You do get feared sometimes, and as a tank, like it is good to be able to pull yourself out of uh, that effect when necessary. My warrior is actually undead, so I have Will of the Forsaken, which lets me do that. So in some cases, like maybe I would pass on having Berserker's Rage since it's kind of a copy uh, in those same situations. Uh, but uh, that's a small, small use case, specifically because I have an undead. But that's going to link into either Piercing Howl, which will snare all enemies and reduce their movement speed, or Berserker Shout, uh, which also removes fear effects from group men members within 12 yards. That's pretty awesome, and I think that's actually a bit of a game changer here and makes me want to take Berserker Rage as just a great like utility if we're fighting against mobs or mechanics that have fear, this is obviously something that you could cut out if you knew like this wasn't a mechanic in the dungeon that you were going to go into. But just generally being able to like mass remove fear effects within members uh, from members within 12 yards is pretty cool. Now, 12 yards is not huge. So but also usually the fear effects. I, I don't know. Like, I still think it's I think it's fairly cool. Uh, Spell Reflect, definitely a good one to take, and uh, that'll lead us into some other ones here as well. So I think we'll grab Spell Reflection. We definitely want Thunderclap, like 100%, and I always want Heroic Leap, for sure. Uh, Intimidating Shout is one that we can definitely use. Uh, this is a lot more usable in dungeons, in my opinion, than it is out in solo content. It's a minute and a half cooldown, so you can use it pretty frequently. It makes the target cower in fear, and then also up to five additional enemies within eight yards flee. So this is a kind of like an oh crap button in a lot of situations. Uh, so we could potentially take that as well. And we may end up like pulling some points out and rearranging some stuff because there's going to be as as we get into this, there's going to be a lot of good things and you can't take all the good things, right? So uh, let's go ahead. And what does that lead us into? Intimidating shout can withstand more damage before breaking or intimidating shout will knock back all nearby enemies except your primary target and cause them to cower in fear for 15 seconds instead of fleeing. Uh, generally, I would like the there to be more damage they can withstand before the fear breaks, especially in a group situation, because you really don't know who's going to target what and, you know, um, what sort of AOE is going to be out there that's going to instant break your fear. Um, so I would generally, I think, take that. 
All right, so then we have Leech. Leech is just solid. We got movement speed. That's also solid, not quite as necessary. Um, in a dungeon, I mean, people are gonna move fast, but generally, you know, you can heroic leap between packs and you're kind of good. Uh, what else do we have? We've got auto attack speed increased, and then we also have Revenge has a chance to immediately fund 50% of the rage spent. So lots of good options here. I think, like I said, we're going to want to come down over into Shockwave and maybe go down over into Avatar potentially. This causes a bleed to enemies and then Spear Bastion is what it is. Uh, so we've got our four second stun on a 30 second cooldown. That's definitely a good one to have. Uh, it's a, an additional way to interrupt targets. If your interrupt is on cooldown, it's also just good for CC and managing mobs. Uh, I like that one quite a bit. What else do we have for actives that we can pick up? We got bitter immunity, three minute cooldown that restores 20% health and instantly removes all diseases, poisons, curses, and bleeds affecting you. So a nice little self heal you can pop. I think you can probably manage that fairly well with impending victory. Although you don't trigger impending victory as much in a group setting, you'll still get it. Not as often. And that's really all we have for actives, actually. So, all right, let's see. We got to spend two more points over here. So I think we could either go for, we want to get into this side of the tree. We have a connection here. So the question is, do we want to grab any of these three here? Cause we won't be able to get to them if we don't take siphoning strikes. So this is auto attack speed increase, maximum rage increased, Titanic throw. So this is a throw. It deals physical damage to the target and five nearby enemies. Okay, that's actually, I like that. And this one is revenge deals more damage, but now costs 10 more rage. So Titanic throw. And we've got that on, that's kind of nice. I, that's, I like that. That's appealing to me. Hmm, okay. And then here we have when you take any damage heal for 4.5% of your maximum health. This can only occur once every 10 seconds. I mean, that's fairly solid as well. Shield slam deals an additional 5% damage and increased critical strike damage. Then we have shattering throw, which I'm not worried about picking up. I think we're going to grab the leech and the auto attack speed because I like that titanic throw. Because Titanic Throw, like, Heroic Throw generates high threat. Titanic Throw generates high threat. This gives you an AoE method of generating high threat on an entire pack from a distance, which I I really think that's cool. Uh, so getting down here, we do have increased armor. And I believe we have armors increased by strength. So we can just get flat armor here, or we can go for, uh, there should be like a strength. You gain strength equal to 5% of your armor value. Right there. Uh, what else do we have? Cooldown of shield slam and pummel is reduced. Um, that's pretty solid, like more interrupts is just good. Cooldown of Pummel is reduced by one second. Successfully interrupting an enemy increases the damage you deal against them. Max number of charges increased and reduced the cooldown. If Whirlwind or Revenge hits three or more enemies, it hits them again for an additional 50% damage. We're going to be doing that all the time. Uh, reduce the cooldown on Heroic Leap by 15 seconds, and it also increases your run speed. Heroic Leap's cooldown is increased by 45 seconds, but it pulls four random enemies within 10 yards to you. Uh, increased by 45 seconds. That turns it into a minute and a half cooldown. But you have Heroic Leap, you have Charge, you have Titanic Throw, um, like Charge Thunderclap, essentially. You've got ways to get enemies to you, and I think... I would try this. I would try this and just see if I like it or not, I think. And then we have the thunderclap here. Increase the damage of thunderclap by 10% when you thunderclap. 
a target affected by your rend, you also affect five nearby targets with rend. Now, I think this has potential if we go the rend route in the protection side of the tree, which I think might be a good thing to do. But um, if we don't go that route, then we do have the radius is increased and it reduces movement speed. Either way, I think we want to take one of those talents for sure. Uh, we do want to take seismic reverberation because we're going to hit three or more targets quite often in a dungeon. Uh, your auto attacks have a 15% chance to hurl weapons at your target and three other enemies in front of you. Again, just kind of spreading that AOE around. Uh, to increase the amount of threat we're generating. I think I do want the stun. We got six more points here. So let's see. We're definitely going to go into shockwave and that's going to be one, two, three, maybe four points. Out of 11. So we are going to be able to go couple different places here so crit sh crit chance and crit damage of execute this goes into some spirit bastion talents you've got increased haste and auto attack critical strikes increase your auto attack speed into thunderous roar and then some options for thunderous roar i think i do want to get this Yeah, we've got a variety of stuff here. It just kind of depends on what we want to take. So uh, we can increase our maximum rage by 30. We can grab Intimidating Shout with a perk. I'd rather wait and see if it feels like we need that or not. Increase our movement speed by 5%. I think Pain and Gain seems nice. Just 4.5% max health healed every 10 seconds when we take damage. Increased armor. Uh, I want to take one of these that goes into quick thinking. So our options are cool down a shield slam and pummel reduced by one second. Cool down a pummel reduced by one second. And when you interrupt an enemy, it increases the damage you deal against them by 5% for 10 seconds or increase the maximum of charges. <clears throat> I think I would just increase the maximum of charges. I like being highly mobile on the battlefield and in a dungeon. And then we have three points uh, that we can drop in. I think these are probably going to change based on what we do on the protection side of the tree. I think we'll do cooldown a shield slam and pummel reduced. And then I think we'll put two points into increasing our maximum rage so we can bank more rage. And if we end up never hitting the rage cap, uh, then we can take points out of this and put them elsewhere. So then we're going to go endurance training, increase stamina by 5% and reduce the effect of fear sap and incapacitate effects on you by 15%. We could also take the points out of here and maybe put them into that uh, Berserker Shout. I kind of like having a few points that it feels like we don't necessarily need to have things for. Because then we can kind of flex them around the tree based on the content we're doing. So then we'll take Shockwave. And then Shockwave deals increased damage and will always deal critical strike damage. And then increase the range of Shockwave by 6 yards, and when Shockwave strikes at least 3 targets, its cooldown is reduced by 15 seconds, which makes it a 25 second. I actually like both of these. I like to Shockwave constantly, like all the time. It's a 2 second stun on everything. Uh, and that's just really good for controlling crowds. It's really good for giving your healer like 2 seconds to breathe. You know, people can reposition, people can move. Uh, I just like it a lot. Then I want to grab this. So this is going to increase haste by 1%. It should be 2%. And your auto attack critical strikes increase your auto attack speed by 20% for 10 seconds. So we have that. Plus we have 
increased auto attack speed by 5%, and then we also have sidearm, where our auto attacks have a chance to hurl weapons at our target, uh, dealing damage. So we're just increasing the frequency where hopefully we'll be able to proc sidearm and then just throw out extra damage in an AoE around us, which I think would work pretty nicely. We got five points left, and I already mentioned wanting to get Avatar. So I think we'll do two points here. You gain strength equal to 10% of your armor value. We'll grab Avatar. And then we have, let's see, we can take either Avatar increases the damage of Thunderclap by 50% and reduces its cooldown by 50%. Or we can take activating Bladestorm, Recklessness, or Avatar randomly cast one of the other two abilities at reduced effectiveness. Uh, I... Personally, I can do the Thunderclap minigame with Avatar, but I like having Signet of Tormented Kings. It's just cool uh, to have that extra ability get cast for you, even if it's reduced. So I think I'll take that for now. And then we have one point left, and I think I might actually pick up Thunderous Roar. This point can go kind of anywhere um, right now. We could pick up Thunderous Roar for more damage. We could pick up Bitter Immunity to have a Oh Crap button. We could pick up Intimidating Shout for more CC. We can kind of put this point wherever we want. I think I'm just going to throw it into movement speed. <laughs> uh, again, again, like this is at this point, this is all going to be like, go test it. See what you feel like you're missing. Make a couple adjustments, right? Oh, I don't actually need the rage. Let me put that in and I need this, you know, CC counter or maybe you know, Intimidating Shout is really good in this particular dungeon, so I want to take that. So you have a couple of points here and there that you can flex out of, um, and that'll allow you to adapt to whatever dungeon you're in. <laughs> All right, so let's do that for the warrior side of the tree. And then over here, we're gonna need Ignore Pain. So that's, we're gonna grab Revenge. Uh, that's another one you could put points into the revenge actually yeah I, I gotta get there that's not a bad one to put into either okay so over here on the protection side of the tree uh we've got demoralizing shout just generally a good uh ability to have to cast we do have devastator where our auto attacks will deal uh physical damage and have a chance to reset the remaining cooldown on shield slam so you can take this if you want to opt out of casting Devastate. Uh, I'm okay with this either way. Uh, I think through playing, I generally do opt into Devastator, but it may be that, you know, that saves a point that you could put in somewhere else. And then you're just spamming Devastator instead of it being a passive. Uh, and then we have Last Stand, which we're definitely going to want to get. Uh, it increases our max health by 30% for 15 seconds and heals us for 30% which is amazing. If you look at this over here, this is restoring 20% health on a three minute cooldown. And uh, it does remove all these negative effects from you, but on a two minute cooldown, we're getting 30% health back and 30% maximum health increase. So last stand is awesome for tanking. Uh, I do want to grab Demoralizing Shout for sure. So then we have Challenging Shout. So this is an AOE taunt on a two minute cooldown. Uh, which is nice to have, but I mean, it's usually one of those things where uh, stuff got out of hand, stuff got out of control, and you want to taunt everything. Which if you have a pretty good group running dungeons, that shouldn't happen very often, and then you don't really need this, but, you know, it does lead into a bunch of other abilities. So then we have a replacement for Challenging Shout, which is Disrupting Shout. This taunts all enemies and interrupts all spell casting and prevents any spell in that school from being cast. So that's a little more interesting to me because it's an AOE interrupt, uh, which potentially could be really cool. Um, so I like I like that. That's not too bad. It's a two point investment. <laughs> uh, let's see. And then here, Heroic Throw deals 100% increased damage and inflicts deep wounds. So we've already upped that to Titanic Throw. So we can make it deal more damage and inflict deep wounds on our target, which is more damage, more ticks, more threat. 
We have show of force, revenge damage increased by 10% and it increases the damage of your next thunderclap by 25%. Also really good uh, because you're going to be doing a lot of revenge thunderclap stuff when you're tanking. Down here, we've got haste for each enemy with or ally within 10 yards. Uh, I love taking this in dungeons because you're almost always going to max this out. Shield slam generates three more rage and extends the duration of shield block. Also a nice one here. And then we have shield charge, which I really <laughs> can you guys tell that I like mobility? <laughs> Uh, so this is a charge that does a bunch of damage and a bunch of AOE damage and generates rage and I just absolutely love the idea of this ability. Um, and we do have Ravager over here which is a nice AOE perfectly valid to have in dungeons too. And we got spell block. You're able to block spell cast against you for 14 seconds. So depending on the dungeon or, or more likely depending on the boss that you're going to fight, that may be quite useful. We've got shield wall. Uh, that's going to be another one we're going to want to pick up. But we can get there from several different directions. So we got a lot of options, a lot of things going on for sure. Uh, I think I want to try to come down here and get shield charge. I'm less concerned about picking up Ravager. I want to make sure I get shield wall. And then I'm not sure we'll take a look at what's in the middle here. So uh, let's go ahead and we can come down this way. So revenge deals more damage or 50% more damage when your successful dodges or parries have made it cost no rage. Uh, then we have demoralizing shout also generates rage and increases damage you deal to effective targets by 20%. So these are both good, both solid, maybe both wor worth taking uh, depending on what you want to do here that's going to lead us into challenging shout and then we've got disrupting shout we've got either of these talents which i think is great we need to take one of those for sure and we're going to want it yeah so we're going to want to come down here uh right now let's go with booming voice all right so that's going to get us into this uh, here we have Devastate, Thunderclap, Revenge, and Execute have a chance to reset the cooldown of Shield Slam. I think that's just really solid to take. Shield Slam doesn't cost you anything, and it generates Rage, so getting a reset on that is awesome. Over here we have Using Shield Slam increases your block value and the damage of Shield Slam for 9 seconds. Multiple applications can overlap, or Last Stand increases your Rage generation by 60%. I feel like our rage generation is okay, and I think uh, constantly increasing our block value is going to be pretty good. We got one extra point here, and I think I would probably throw this into best serve cold. So we're going to grab challenging shout. That's going to put us into either one of these. I'm kind of on board with trying this whole heroic throw thing here. So um, even though I think maybe show of force is going to be the better talent here, I think I'm going to take improved heroic throw. I'm going to take into the fray over here. Increase the radius of demoralizing shout. Each enemy hit by thunderclap reduces the cooldown on demoralizing shout. Um, that's a little more relevant now, I think. Might be worth picking up if we have the spare talent point. Over on this side, 30% of damage you deal adds to your active ignore pain. You're healed for 50% of the damage dealt by deep wounds. Uh, so let's see. Our deep wounds is coming from Devastate and Revenge. We do have a lot of the revenge focused talents. We're missing Frothing Berserker, mainly, I think. Um, we are going to be casting Devastate quite a bit, so that's okay. I kind of like potentially the Brutal Vitality, so the... Fueled by violence, this is going to happen pretty much constantly because you're going to be casting revenge and you're going to be casting your devastate a lot. And brutal vitality is only going to contribute when you have ignore pain up, but you will have ignore pain up a good amount of the time. So I kind of like that a little better, I think. So what does this lead into? So this goes into last stand's cooldowns reduced by 10 seconds and it grants you shield block for the effect of its duration. 
Okay. Blocking an attack deals damage to the attacker. Deep wounds, Rin, and thunderous roars, bleed effects deal increased damage. Yeah, so we can op opt into this uh, whole like rend bleed build here, which I think is one I'd want to try. Like blood and thunder, we take the point out of here, we grab thunderous roar, we go for the deep wound heals over here, we pick up rend, um, and then we just have this thing where we're trying to bleed all the targets around us. I don't know if that's what I want to do right now. I definitely want to try that build though and see how it works. And then here we have execute damage dealt increases execute shield slam increases damage or has increased damage and reduces damage against you. Um, I think I kind of we could potentially skip this. We want to grab shield wall. Your attacks have a chance to make your next execute. OK, periodic bleed effects can grant you rage. And then we have rend. We got to spend eight points here. So what do we have down here? Shield block lasts longer. Every 10 rage you spend reduces the cooldown of avatar and shield wall. Shield slam generates additional rage and reduces the remaining cooldown of shield wall. Or shield wall gains an additional charge and grants 50% of its effect to all party members. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do shield block last longer. Uh, let's grab the Thunderlord talent here. That does kind of make me want to switch over to Unstoppable Force, but we won't <laughs> uh, right now. Let's grab the Brutal Vitality. Let's grab Bolster. I think I want to grab Spike Shield. And then Punish. Okay, so we've got our Ravager with a perk here, and that's Strength and Armor and Crit Chance. We've got our Shield Charge with Champion's Bold Work, and that's Stamina, Armor, and Haste. So I already know I want to get these, so we're going to grab those. And then here we have Increased Block Chance by 6% and Block Value by 15%. That's 2 points, so 12 and 30. Uh, we've got Outburst, Consuming Rage grants a stack of Seeing Red, which transforms at one stack in Outburst, causing your next Shield Slam or Thunderclap to be more effective and grant Ignore Pain. Your max health is increased, and every 10 Rage you spend heals you for 1% of your maximum health. When your health is brought below 35%, you take 75% less damage for 8 seconds and healing you receive is increased by 100%. I think I want to take those. And then that gives us 2 points left. And again, I think these are like a flexible 2 points. We could take, you know, Devastator. We could take the Spell Block if that was going to be useful. We could swap out Disrupt Disrupting Shout. Um kind of do whatever we want here but i think i'd just go for the raw stats right here strength and armor 10 percent increase and crit chance four percent increase so let's apply this all right let's take a look at what we have so we've got our challenging shouts. We've got our demoralizing shouts. Last stands. We've got our pain. We got our crazy shield charge thing. We've got heroic leap, thunderclap, spell reflection. We've got our storm bolt, avatar, shockwave, shield wall, revenge. So we have a lot, a lot going on here. So generally speaking, we're going to be ignoring Slam. We're probably going to be ignoring Whirlwind because we're going to be wanting to cast Revenge. Um, got Execute. We'll put Spell Reflection up here as kind of a utility. 
All right, so we have Devastator, which will just spam in between things. We got Shield Slam, which will cast on cooldown. It'll generate rage for us. Uh, we've got three options for rage spenders here. So we have Revenge if we're sitting good and we're not too worried about our defense. We have Shield Block, which is going to be what we're going to want to cast against melee attackers. So if we're taking a lot of melee damage, we cast Shield Block. We've got Ignore Pain, which is just going to absorb uh, a bunch of damage regardless of type. So we're going to rotate through those as needed. And then we have Thunderclap and we have Impending Victory and Execute. So really our only sort of like offensive ability that we're using here is Avatar. So let's go. None of my keybinds are the same. All right. Do we have a... Those are all training dummies. Do we have a... No tanking dummies, huh? At least not that I could tell. This one wasn't, uh, wasn't doing anything to us. Okay. So we have a couple different options here. Uh, I forgot the, I was wondering why this is weird. The keybinds are being odd. Okay, so. Okay, there we go. That's better. So obviously we can do our, our crazy little shield charge in. So we'll do it over here like we're doing it against, you know, like a group of enemies. So first off, we have our Titanic throw. Look at that. Like it smacked four targets. That's awesome. And we've got the application of deep wounds. So they're all bleeding, which is super nice. Uh, so we can obviously we can pull with Titanic throw. We could charge in. Uh, we can also do our heroic leap, which we have the the vacuum on. It's not going to work on the target dummies, but it should pull them in. Then we also have shield charge. Boom, 35,000 damage to the main target. That's insane. And it's a four second stun and it generates 50 rage uh that's so good so we have a lot of ways to uh pull people and the nice thing about this is that you know even if we're in the middle of the fight you know if somebody goes off over on the side we can still uh heroic throw or titanic throw hit them generate some threat pull them back over generate threat on other things nearby uh we have the potential to charge over to somebody if we need to you know and then over here we need to charge over to that guy we're good to go okay we need to come back in we got shield charge like for me this is what i like doing on a warrior i like being incredibly mobile and just being able to move where i need to around the battlefield um continuously pull enemies with aoe and and all that kind of good stuff so we have those we've got our taunt we've got our challenging shout to taunt everything uh, in our area we didn't pick up anything to modify that we've got spell reflection to counter uh magical damage so it's going to reduce magical damage we take by 20 percent for five seconds and it also will reflect the first spell we've got our storm bolt for our stun pretty nice four second stun uh, we've got our interrupts we've got avatar which also cast recklessness on us that time. So anytime we cast Avatar, we're gonna get a, a little bonus there. And then with our Avatar, let's see, did we pick that up? Where was that at? 
Every 10 rage we spend will reduce the remaining cooldown on avatar and shield wall. So as we spend rage on revenge or shield block or ignore pain, this is going to help us to reduce the cooldown of avatar. I'm really feeling like I want to take Devastator because we almost constantly have things to push here. Uh, we would have to take a point out of something. It would be a point out of this stat and grab Devastator, I think. That's just a preference thing for me. Then we can drop that. And we can make some adjustments here. Shield charge. Boom. Big damage. Now I want to see, are we getting the, the axes? See if we can uh, pull this over here. Are we getting um, sidearm? Oh, it just happened. Yeah, yeah, see, it's happening there. Yep. It happened quite a few times in a row there. And what do we have that was increasing? So this just gave our auto attacks a chance to hurl weapons. And we had increased haste and auto attack crits increased our haste as well. And then we also have our into the fray increasing our haste. Okay. Nice, we got our uh, Blade Storm that time when we cast Avatar. Sweet. We can start spending some Rage. Using the cooldown of Avatar. So it has a minute and a half cooldown and we've already got it down below a minute. Granted, I was just sitting on a full thing of Rage there because I wasn't casting abilities, but. And then we have our Shockwave. So let's take a look at this. We picked up a couple things for Shockwave, right? So it normally does 8,300 damage. But we picked up the thing where it does 350% increased damage and always crits. And then if it hits three targets, the cooldown's reduced and the range is increased by three yards. So 10K, 11K, cooldown reduced to 25 seconds. Beautiful. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Then we have our de our demoralizing shout, and we've got our booming voice for that. So that'll increase the damage we deal to targets. So with that, if we booming voice, avatar, shockwave, 16,000. Ooh, I like it. I like it. I like it. Yeah, okay. I am liking this quite a bit. Obviously, we got to get into a dungeon. We got to test it out and we got to see 18,000. What kind of nonsense damage are we doing here? Yeah, we got to get into a dungeon and, and test it out and everything. But uh, I I'm liking the utility and everything we have going on here. And like I said, there's a multitude of ways that we can tweak and change the build based on the dungeon we're going to go into or the type of content. Again, do we need anti-fear? Do we need extra CC? Uh, do we need additional like spell mi damage mitigation? You know, um, do we want to try? I definitely do want to try that bleed version of the build as well and see how that works. But uh that being said, I think like with this the way it is, uh, I feel pretty good about the build the way it's set up. Uh, we do have Last Stand, which I think uh, it gives us 
shield block for the duration as well. So if we pop that, we got 14 seconds of shield block, which is really nice. And then also we have our shield wall with the AOE. So that's going to have two charges, which is very nice. It's a 3.5 minute recharge, but just popping that. I wonder, did anybody here get it? No, they didn't. Okay. Because they're not in our groups. Which is what I expected. So yeah, I think I would definitely, I would roll into a dungeon with this and see how it does and then make adjustments from there. But based on, you know, just kind of what I'm seeing here, I really like a lot of the utility, the mobility uh, that we have, the, the CC that we have. Like this is really the way that I like to play warrior as a tank. I like to be disruptive and mobile. And so for me, I'm very, very happy with the options we have in the talent tree. And uh, again, it's one of those things where, you know, a couple tweaks here or there may make the difference and may make it a better build. But uh, I like what I see so far. So awesome. All right, you guys, that is all I have for you. Please uh, like the video and leave a comment if you want to. Uh, I definitely appreciate the interaction with you guys. It's super important to me here on the channel. I'm not here for the money. I'm here for the community. So uh, I'd encourage you guys to please engage with the channel uh, if you can. And uh, I appreciate it every time. So that's what I got for you for the protection warrior. Looking at it, trying to make a tanking build. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching it, and I'll see you on the next one.